Are we ready to begin? Okay, I'd like to. Keith can hold the flag up for it. I'd like to. Um, <laughs> I'd like to call to call to order the um, Tuesday, August twenty fifth, uh, Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting, and uh, first on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Next on the agenda is adjustments uh, to the agenda. Are there any? Yes, I have three. Okay. Um, I need to add another nomination. Actually, it's just an increase in time for an existing staff member under nominations. Uh, I think John wanted to add a conversation on the pool vote that we had at the uh, earlier meeting. And also, we need to add an executive session to discuss uh, some new legal uh, activities in the Enrich case. Okay, so um, new, new business uh, D, right. consideration of superintendent's nominations to teacher positions. Um, Yes, there, there will also be an addition there. An addition there. Right. Um, if we could uh, add as uh, G then, under new business, um, discussion regarding the uh, pool vote. I intended to do that when the, uh, the minutes are up for approval. Okay. okay. Well, so, so just so it's not a separate issue. And G then would be, uh, new business would be request for executive session. Uh, that would to, be number nine. I'm sorry, executive number nine. Um, request for executive session to uh, review a legal matter. Any other adjustments? Uh, seeing none, we'll move on. Next on the agenda is approval of school board uh, minutes. There were Minutes from the special meeting held on June 8th, regular meeting on June 9th, a June 16th special meeting, and a July 2nd special meeting, as well as a, an August 6th special meeting. Are there revisions or corrections to uh, any of those? I had on um, August 6th, under four, it looked like there were two motions made. I think it was just one. Is that Mary? Or that's, is it? The way I, that's the way the, minute, the notes were written, and that's the way I typed it up. I, I yeah. wasn't there, so I don't have any yeah, We were a little or, unclear about that. We did talk about that. Does anyone else, since you were going to bring up talking about it anyway, John, do you have any recollection if it was Well, two? I'd like to bring to the board's attention that up above it says school board members present were, and Kevin Sweeney's name is, is being present. And right below it says school board member absent was Kevin Sweeney. And then down under item four it says Kevin Sweeney voted in the affirmative for the and motion. It was Keith Witherall that was, was Keith. absent. That and was, that's the error. So probably that should be amended to show the correct individual being present. Right. Kevin is all right. It's Keith Witherall. Keith, Keith Witherall was absent. No. Was absent. No. I'm sorry. no. Kevin wasn't Kevin there. Kevin wasn't there right. for he the missed executive the session. Right. He missed right. the beginning, but Keith. Witherall well, was not the there pool. at all that evening. You didn't right. miss the pool time. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You joined us at a certain point. That's no, a, no, I wasn't there. That's, that's no, not Keith correct. Was, Keith no, was no, there. No, Kevin no, was missing. Right. Okay. So, that was the other meeting that Keith was That was the other absent. meeting that Keith that was, was the other meeting you were on. Kevin oh, was recused, has right. recused himself, which I uh, prefer rather than absent, from the executive uh, session matter. And due to a misunderstanding, Kevin was waiting over at the other building for the pool conversation. So I don't care whether or not that's reflected, but I wouldn't. But but the we but what does need at to what be time you arrive, basically. what what does need to be reflected is that on number four, the vote was taken. There was yes yes for Curia, Decena, Entwistle, Praga, and Witherall, right. and no was Ridge, and then the next paragraph um, is a whether we get, get rid of this second motion or what is exactly the same thing. Am I correct, Mary? 
That's, That's so it was, was Keith error, and not Kevin. Right, and up here should be changed too. And up um, and school board member absent, we can. Well, he would like to say he was recused. We can yeah. do the the recused. the better recused. description for that, and perhaps identify the time that um, Kevin joined the meeting. Yeah, well, he never did join that. I meeting. never did join the meeting. He okay, he was not workshop, here. That's that's true. Okay, that's and, right. And he should, his name should be removed from up here, having been present. Yeah. Correct. Do we have those revisions then, Mary? Yes, they'll be done tomorrow. Okay, good. Now, is this an appropriate time that I mentioned to give an explanation in reference to my vote? Um, That's why I, I have to remove it from an item under the new business. Uh, yes, if we're going to cover it, well, why don't we cover it under under this um, under okay. this item? Okay, so the public knows why I voted no. You might want to explain the. Uh, the motion. Okay, well, the original item on the agenda from a meeting notice that was given to the public and was on the TV, it said, hey, consider a proposal to transfer responsibility for the Donald Richards pool from the school budget to the town budget. And I made the comment that that was what we were there to discuss, that was what we were there to vote on, and the town manager said the item was inappropriate, it wasn't correct, and he corrected what he wished to have us vote on, and I said that the public wasn't given good due notice, and they didn't have an opportunity to speak before the board, and I was not in favor of the item. And I stand by my vote that that's the reason why I voted in the negative. The, the motion that was made by Beth Currier, um, and then seconded by Jen DeSena, was to recommend that the school board support a public vote of yes on the pool referendum. Um, as Lane, I believe at the time that, that, uh, that John was referring to by the town manager, um, it was explained to the board uh, that it was a necessary um, uh, uh, sort of uh, amble. Uh, sort of preamble to, um, to, to being able to produce the votes that would be prepared for the public referendum on the pool. That, um, that, that the town or state something required that there be um, some position by the school board stated as to whether or not they support or did not support um, the, uh, the particular, um, whether or not they had a yes vote, whether or not they supported a yes or no vote on the referendum that was being proposed. And Beth made the recommendation that the school board support it. It was seconded, and um, John um, uh, was the um, was the person who did not uh, vote in favor of that. The other members that were present did vote in favor of it. Uh, one clarification: the town manager said this was necessary in order to have the absentee ballots available to the public, and if it were not done at this meeting. Some of the community would be upset that their absentee ballot wasn't available to them at an early date. And that was where I had my problem. There was some discussion that we could have done it tonight. There may have been a little bit of a delay getting it voted, but that didn't seem to be a consideration. Okay. Any comments? I, I just wanted to say we did, as um, John said, we did ask um, Michael McGovern if we could wait till this meeting and he felt it was a real hardship on him getting the ballots printed and that every resident of Cape Elizabeth would have their say on the ballot, so therefore they would be very well represented in their views. Um, therefore, we decided to proceed. Um, but we did initially wish to wait until a public televised meeting, but um, to accommodate the town manager, we chose to do it then. To move ahead. Okay. Any other revisions or corrections to uh, the school board meetings? Now you know why Mary takes the minutes instead of me. <laughs> Usually. Um, being none, then uh, they stand as uh, approved. Communications. We have items under communications. Did you want to read the letter from the Maine Human Relations? Um, Human rights commission. I mean, did we wish to do that? Um, one other, one other piece of communications would just uh, be to um, to share uh, 
with the public that the school board along with the administrative council have been working hard uh, in preparation of the goals uh, for the 1998-99 um, school year. Uh, we did more work on those today and, and basically have um, reached a consensus. Those will be uh, cleaned up a little bit and uh, shared at the September meeting. Um, another piece of communications received uh, and it has to do with um, a, a legal matter, um, actually a Maine Human Rights Commission complaint. Um, and what I will do is uh, I will read the letter received by uh, Cynthia Moles. Um, regarding the statement of finding, uh, the case is E96-0582, and this is Ridge versus Cape Elizabeth School Department. Uh, dear Ms. Moles, should be Dr. Moles, after investigation and consideration of the above reference charge of discrimination, the commission has not found reasonable grounds to believe that unlawful discrimination has occurred. Accordingly, the complaint has been dismissed. If any questions concerning this matter, please feel free to contact us. And it's signed sincerely, Patricia E. Ryan, who is the executive director of the Maine Human Rights Commission. Are there other communications? Um, being none, we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Just a couple of comments before I do the items on the agenda. We did meet with the new staff this morning, and although we'll miss the staff members who are leaving us, we were very impressed with the people who joined us today. They're all ready, willing, and eager to work here, and we're looking forward to working with them. Tomorrow morning, we have an orientation meeting for substitute teachers, and we can always have more people come if you know of anyone who perhaps didn't know about that meeting but you think would be able to come and would be interested in substituting, please encourage them to come. The state has relaxed the requirements a little bit, so the, the qualifications of people who are eligible to sub is a little bit broader than it used to be, and we do need substitute <coughs> teachers. Uh, under A, notification of teacher resignations, based on three, Deborah Twombly from grade four, Craig Roberts from grade eight, and Ted DeMille from kindergarten. If you just correct me, Craig Roberts is from grade seven. Oh, sorry, you're right. Wife grade eight? Yes. <laughs> Can I raise a question here from the audience? Yes. Um, these are only three of the more recent teachers that have resigned from Pond Cove over the, um, over the summer. I really have some concerns as a parent as to why so many teachers have resigned. Is that being looked at? Are there exit interviews that are conducted? Or, I mean, how do we deal with this when we have so many that have resigned? Mm -hmm. Yes, you do do exit interviews for those who are willing to come. And these are the only ones that have occurred since the last meeting. It's a total of how many since last school year? Uh, I don't know. We're going to have a full report on staff changes at the September board meeting, which is in two weeks. The, um, to answer your question, the, the superintendent does does uh, conduct exit interviews, um, and, and that's a good. I think it's a good question that you're asking, and um, so we're we're going to be presenting a, a more detailed look at the staffing pattern. Um, at the next meeting, which is really just a couple of weeks. Right. I mean, there's always personal issues, but um, the exit interviews it would seem like could be really valuable. And I don't know if school board members attend those or. Um, we we don't. Um, I don't know to the extent exit interviews were being conducted. It was um, something that I know that we started a couple of years ago, um, okay. and uh, I actually conducted some of the initial exit interviews. And then it was just it was just not operational or, or feasible for a board member to do that, and it's really the uh, you know a, a duty of the superintendent and and, and uh, Dr. Moles took over and did those. George started two years ago when we had a, a large group in the high school leaving, doing exit interviews and then turned it over. So it does happen in trends. Um, so as a that would. That would presumably be an item on the, the agenda, and you'd have an opportunity to ask further questions as you, as you get to see the staff report. Um, what we need is a motion on these resignations. Actually, it's only no. a notification, okay. so you don't need to do it. Okay. The uh, 30s building? Right. We just had a report at the Finance Committee on the renovation to the 1930s building. It will be ready for occupancy on the first day of school. 
I don't know what else, whether Pauline or Sue, whether you have anything else you'd like to say on that item. We're very pleased with the progress, the cost. We're in under budget. I, I'm looking I, forward to the I new just space. Make a comment too, as a person who's been up and visited several times with a real vested interest in it, that I've been really impressed with the job that Ernie McVeigh has done throughout the summer, um, overseeing this project, um, also getting down on his hands and knees and doing some of the project and working with it in a real hands-on, and his entire crew from our system, um, as well as the people that we have worked with. They've um, been people who seem to have a real care about the building and see it as an interesting problem to solve. And my observation was. In the learning results, one of the things says about becoming a problem solver for life, and these people really demonstrated it throughout the summer, and the care with which they've done their work is something that we will benefit from. And I would really like to invite the public to be sure that they come in and see the top floor of the 30s building, because one of the things they were able to do in three of the classrooms is to preserve the old gym floor. And they have done that very carefully and um, have really taken care with that and yet made it very usable for students in 1998 as well too. And I would really hope the public takes every advantage to come in and see what has happened. And I think for people who have lived in Cape Elizabeth for a long time and perhaps even recall playing games up on the gym floor there, they will see a part of the past come alive for the future. So compliments to the group. Yeah, I wanted to reiterate that yeah. Ernie, when Ernie was with us earlier, he did mention in great glowing terms the, the quality of the work done by the staff. Yeah. Uh, just a question about that in terms of the basement part of the building. What's the schedule on that? Well, Sue is telling people she's going to be in that space in November. We, we did be in by Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, we did ask Ernie that earlier tonight. That was He's not sure. By the town council at their last meeting, and um, as soon as one project is complete, which is almost as we speak, we'll be moving on to the next. So. I think we'll see the beginning of that um, very soon. When you do end up going over there, that's also when the day after school care would move also. The entire operation of community services will be moving over, yes. Okay. I, you weren't here earlier, but Ernie did say that he's not sure it's going to move quite that rapidly because he's not going to have access to as much of the, as many as the staff <laughs> members. But anyway. Okay. <laughs> Optimistic. Optimistic, right. Um, this was something I was going to uh, cover under the, um, uh, the report out from the financial uh, committee meeting that we had at 6.30. Ernie wasn't here. He, he gave the update. And um, on behalf of the school board, we wanted to certainly extend our commendations to um, Ernie uh, and to the town maintenance department. Uh, this was uh, an almost undoable eight-week task uh, that was well done, done on time and done under budget. And, uh, and also um, commendations and, and thanks to uh, Sue Weatherby and, and her staff. Um, Ernie carefully uh, sort of made note of that without uh, your help, Sue. Um, this also would not have helped, uh, would not have uh, uh, come out the way that it, that it did. So we um, appreciate the effort of both of those people and their respective staffs. One of the things that I, I found um, very nice to see for the first time was the maintenance and the custodial staff working together. And the task really didn't seem to matter. I mean, they pitched in. Um, our custodians did maintenance work and vice versa. So it was a good opportunity to see them to uh, just look at a goal to accomplish the project and it really didn't matter what your job description said. So it was, it was very nice to see. Teamwork. Absolutely. Good. And now we're up to you, so update on the facilities. Readiness for school opening. Well, um, I'm happy to say that we seem to be in the best shape ever in terms of um, having the buildings cleaned and, and ready for the start of school. There are some, um, a few housekeeping things that still need to be done. They'll be back doing glass and tweaking up bathrooms and so forth, but the major part of the buildings are cleaned um, and they look terrific. And um, as again, the staff has done, done a terrific job. We were able to bring back some of our school year custodians a little bit earlier. Um, this year to help with that process and um, this next week we'll be moving still moving a few classrooms I think predominantly in the high school um, and just being there to assist teachers with setup of their room and so forth um, but there's no question the buildings are are about ready and we'll certainly be ready to go on Monday we will have one which that has nothing to do with Sue or her uh, organization uh, as you know, we're in a three-year cycle of replacing lockers, and uh, we so we ripped out a good section of uh, lockers, mainly those belonging to the senior class, 
and they, the replacements are not going to be here until about two weeks into the uh, uh, school year. So we, we are looking for ways to uh, staging areas for the seniors to put all of their materials in between classes. But that, as I say, is no uh, reflection on Sue or uh, her crew. It's just that we have uh, late delivery from the manufacturers and we'll get those new lockers in as soon as possible. I have to say that the seniors that came into the high school um, over the past couple of weeks with the carpet not yet being laid and the lockers not in said, ah, oh, this is great. This is just the way the middle school was. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they were still very upbeat about coming back to school and it was refreshing to see the cement floors and, and the uh, vacant ceiling tiles and the no lockers. It was, it was, it was um, an environment that they were very used to seeing four years ago um, in, in the middle school. So I, I think they'll do just fine. Great. Peter's going to talk about the Spanish exchange program. Uh, as you know, last year we uh, gained approval uh, for, from you for a Spanish exchange and, in fact, a French exchange. The, at this point, uh, we have received no word on the French exchange, so I, I'm not very hopeful that that's going to take place. But the, uh, at uh, just about the end of the year, the end of the school year last year, we did receive word that we had uh, hooked up with a partner school. And uh, I would like to turn to Skip Crosby, who will be handling the exchange for the details uh, on that. The school is Sierra Blanca. It's in southern, on the coast of southern Spain. And it's in Andalusia, Malaga, Spain. And the chaperone is Rafael Cabreras. He'll be bringing six young ladies between the ages of 15 and 16, and they'll arrive on the 13th of Sp uh, September in Boston. And they're making plans now to get them here a few days ago. They will be here for exactly three weeks, and we'll be on October 4th. We have our families all in line, and I met with them just before this meeting, and um, we made the last minute plans uh, of of how they'll spend some of their day trips. Um, they will be going to the Maine Maritime Museum in Bath, the um, Museum of Maine and Augusta. Um, one of the families will give them a, a tour of Casco Bay in, in their boat. And they will um, be doing a tour of Portland, the Art Museum, uh, Victoria Mansion, etc. The students have all written to each other, they've all heard from each other, and there's a great deal of excitement. Uh, and we will, in turn, be going in February, the, the week of vacation, and the, the week and a half following a, uh, February vacation. Have those students been identified yet? The ones from Cape Elizabeth that are going to space? Yes. You do know they are. And that will be how many students will be going? Uh, six. So it's a it's a direct six exchange. Six exchange. Uh, but not all girls, right? Are we sending all girls? We have a token male. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> and I would just like to thank the school board for permission. I think it's a, a very valuable program, and I hope to have students once they've completed to report. That would be great. We'd love to have them come back and report out. You firsthand what it meant personally and educationally. Good. It's so perfect. We'll see them in March. Yes. <laughs> Good. Thank you. I'd like to thank Skip for all the work he's been doing uh, uh, on the phones uh, uh, in the middle of a, you know, just completing a graduate program and uh, has, has had to be uh, working on uh, arranging tours and, and that type of thing. It's a, it's a lot of work and uh, it's just beginning. There will still be much more to come, but I'd like to thank you for all of that. Pete, hey, why do you think the French one hasn't worked out? It's always a question of uh, finding a, a partner school. Uh, and. It depends on, they, they take our uh, requirements and the description of our this, school this and our location. This organization, this national? Uh, it's the same, yeah. the same umbrella organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, they look at uh, when we wanted to travel, roughly how many students we wanted to have involved, where we are in the country, uh, and then they match that with school other school requests in, in France or in Spain. And... Uh, uh, it just is a matter of a match. Uh, if they don't have anybody that's interested in coming to the Northeast uh, uh, with that time frame or that they want to have a six-week exchange and we want a three-week, uh, mm -hmm. then it, it doesn't work. And in fact, we were 
starting to despair of having a Spanish exchange. Uh, it wasn't, it was about the week before the end of school, I think, uh, that we received the confirmation that yes, indeed, they had found uh, school. So it's always a matter of the match. We, we've we been fairly careful, uh, and, and by uh, board policy also, we use accredited organizations and, and we go through National Association of Secondary School Principals for approved organizations. We probably could come up with an exchange uh, but our feeling would be if, if we went with a group that's not uh, recognized, mm -hmm. we don't know what we'd be getting into. Uh, we, we could get into all kinds of problems. So mm -hmm. we've been fairly conservative in that, and consequently, sometimes the match can't be made. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all I have. Uh, next on the agenda is committee reports, uh, the first being the uh, finance subcommittee. Um, I'll just give a quick uh, review of um, the minutes from that meeting. Uh, we did meet this evening um, here in the library at 6.30 uh, to sign warrants. Um, we as well adopted um, an EdTech 2 uh, salary scale which will um, be uh, put in place with um, uh, all uh, future uh, uh, folks that we would recruit into those positions. Um, there was a food service report out that was provided uh, to the <coughs> to the board. Um, Ernie McVeigh uh, provided us with an update on the uh, the 30s building and the renovation project that was completed. Um, uh, we had an opportunity to re review appropriation reports. Um, we also had a presentation on a special education uh, issue from the uh, director of special ed. Uh, received an update on labor negotiations and uh, three negotiated contracts that have been completed um, and as well discussed um, a salary issue uh, with uh, regard to an administrator. Um, that was uh, pretty much the financial subcommittee. The policy subcommittee has not yet met. Um, the new committee will be meeting. They'll be making a determination um, as to who will chair that. The next meeting is on the 16th of September, and I know that the time was of question. Oh, 8.30 a.m. So it will be 8.30 a.m. The 16th of September at 8.30 a.m. Okay. Unfinished business, is there any? Seeing none, we'll move on to new business, uh, consideration of uh, teacher requests for leaves of absence. I have two requests for one year leave of leaves of absence. Kristen Tripp, who is a high school physical education teacher, and Allison Hawks, who is an elementary teacher at Pond Cove. Unfortunately, these were received during August, well beyond the, the time when we generally can process these. And for that reason, I recommend that they not be approved. Certainly, if either of these teachers wishes to return to the system, we would consider them for any vacancies that we have. Um, do I have a, a motion on, do we need to uh, vote on these? Yes, you do. Okay. Can I have a motion on uh, the request for the leaves of, of absence? George. Yes, I move that Kevin. we decline the request in accordance with the superintendent's recommendations. Both, <coughs> both, both requests. Okay. Can we split them? You may. Um, well, let me, the motion is. Let me just room. let me see. Is there a second for? Second. Okay. Discussion. Um. This might yeah, be a time to I'd, discuss. I'd like to split the two. Okay. Requests. Can I offer an amendment? I'd, I would just like to say I would, um, I'd say I would like to consider them together because I don't like to um, try to figure out which one's a better um, plan than the other. I think as a policy matter, we probably need to de uh, develop some kind of guideline for when a leave of absence might be granted. And I would be interested in doing that from the policy committee standpoint, but I think um, we get into a, a funny precedent situation if we um, grant one for one reason and not for another. So um, I would hope, you know, we would highly consider each applicant if they came back next year. We usually do have vacancies in the elementary school on a yearly basis. Certainly the high school is a more difficult one. Um, but 
I, I hope we would develop some guidelines so that it's not such a difficult decision. We okay. already have a guideline in terms of the date, the deadline for the request. Well, they, they are supposed to tell us if they're not going to return by a, by a certain date. And that's contractual? Or that's in, the, in their contract. Is that before the end of the school year? No, but it's before August 1st, I believe. This is well, all, Allison's is dated is July 21st. Yeah. Oh. Well, it was not, we did not receive it until August in either case. I mean, the, the difficulty is to fill a one-year position versus a full-time position. Uh, we, our pool of candidates is greatly diminished when you're looking for someone for a one-year position because a, an experienced teacher who's currently employed is not going to be interested in leaving that position for a one-year position. So that's why it's, it's very difficult, and we really need a longer running time to look for a one-year position. Well, I think the benefits we might gain from Allison's experience might outweigh that, um, we, that we would gain as a school district. But, and that's why I'd like to separate the two issues. Okay. Can we just review what we do have as, as policy on, well, on this matter? Well, uh, the only precedent that I know of is that we did have a request last year from a teacher for a one-year leave of absence, and the board did deny that. And was that That's on the basis of receiving it too late? No, that was really received earlier on. It was it was based on a conversation about the application to uh, the experience to his job. But we had much more time. We went back back to him and asked for more information. So we had much more of a dialogue and also had a much longer period of time in terms of advertising that position. I believe that happened in April, May, fairly early in the year. So. Um, so, just if we were just to take this on a pol just po strictly policy-wise, um, the the application for um, a leave uh, needs to be received by August first. Is that correct? Is that specific? No, teachers teachers who are going to leave the system need to notify us. Uh, one of these teachers. Um, if she was eligible in terms of the years in the system, would have been eligible for a sabbatical, could have applied for a sabbatical, but that deadline is way back. That deadline is in the fall. But she's not eligible and that was for that. She, I think she's not in terms of the number of years she's been here. Is that right. true, Tom? Yes, okay, so she wouldn't have, she, her content would have been fine, but she would not have been here long enough for a sabbatical. I guess my feeling from a policy standpoint is if we came up with some sort of policy that said if it had the content of a sabbatical, it met those criteria and we put a timeline on it, we would then possibly grant leave of absences for those kind of things. But, you know, but again, um, I think we need to develop the policy because it gets really, really hard. And the other difference with these, with the sabbatical, the people make a commitment to return to the system. And in neither of these cases is there a they're a commitment to return to the system so that we are really the ones that are uh, offering position. Kevin? I think last year we set a precedent on leaves of, uh, leaves of absences for teachers who are testing the waters of another career. Um, that we would not give them any golden parachute that anyone else has. So that that's part and parcel of what goes into one of my, one of my thought Courts is that's completely consistent with the precedent we already said. On the other one, I also see that uh, there is a an indication that I'm going whether you grant this or not. There is no indication that I am absolutely coming back. I view an adventure like that, and I do view it as an adventure that the, these people should take advantage of. It may lead to other things um, which would prevent their return. And I don't think it's in the best interest of our students uh, to be shopping around one-year teachers any more than we absolutely have to. Other comments, discussion? Um, oh, sorry, Tom. I, I don't know if it's my role to speak up. I mean, Allison is a fine teacher, and I think these are very unusual circumstances for Allison. You just don't get that from the shoulder to go around the world that way. Um, it's not for me to say, but if I had a vote, I think I would support it. Well, I think that the letter that she writes says she's requesting a year off, and granted, I'm sure she weighed the whether I'll, if you don't let me come back, then I'm going anyway. 
Um, and I think that the benefits that we can get, I mean, not only is she going to be doing this internet schooling thing that I'm sure we could hook up to while she's away, um, I, I just think the life experiences that she would bring back to a classroom are, are something that you can't put a figure on. Uh, and although most people on this board weren't on this board when they granted another teacher a leave of absence in the past, I think that until we have some policy that I think that um, especially where what she's doing would fall into the category of a sabbatical, I think should really be considered. Um, and uh, so I'd be in favor of granting her the year off. We do only offer a limited number of sabbaticals per year, and we do have another teacher on a sabbatical, so that's another. I mean, maybe you could put year. in there that she has to notify us by a certain date so that hiring in the fall, if she's not returning, um, isn't difficult. You know, that, that you would be able to hire early we, enough. Right. Um, but there's no way of holding people to that, so I mean, that would just be, she could give us an indication, but there's nothing in writing at this point because there is no policy. So we, we would have no. Well, it could be contingent upon granting her the year that she has to let us know that she's coming back. I mean, if we were going to do that, then we'd need, really need to develop an agreement, which we don't currently have. We have that kind of agreement for people on sabbaticals. We don't have that for people who just ask for leaves of absence. We do have the agreement of the contract as to what date this needs to be in by, though. Well, not for leave, not leaves of absence, for sabbaticals and for people who are not returning to the system but there's nothing who, for people who want to leave for a year in return. We don't we're, I, think we're, um, I think we're veering off the course here in terms of the motion that was made. Um, perhaps you'd like to amend the, the motion? The motion as it stands, Beth was recommending that we consider um, both of these requests together and that we vote on them together. Maybe, perhaps you'd like to? I think Kevin made well, the motion. Kevin made the I'm motion sorry, Kevin. to... Um, to con follow the superintendent's recommendation. Recommendation. recommendation to deny them, and I want to separate them. Okay. So I don't know how you'd amend Charlie, that. Charlie, you're going to have to help us here. <laughs> well, we no, you, all you need to do, well, go ahead, the Charlie, you want to do it? procedural thing. Yeah. Right. You either have to act on Kevin's right. motion, right. or you have to get a second to her amendment. Or she has to right. make an Which amendment to, and that's see if she I'm, gets a second. To well, then I'd, like I'd to move to amend Kevin's motion to separate the two um, requests for leaves of absence. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do we have a second? On that. Okay, so now the, the motion. No, just the amendment. Just the amendment. The, the amendment in front of us is to look at these two separately. Um, made by Jen, seconded by Marie. Um, can I have a show of those who are in favor of the, of the amendment? It's four to three. Four yes, say, three no. Anything. The amendment then passes, Cares. takes. Whatever. Um, so now we have in front of us um, a motion to. Uh, I have to make another one motion. then the other. Okay. Right. Okay. So can I have a motion first on? Let's take uh, Ms. Tripp's request. Is there a motion? I move Kevin. that we accept the superintendent's nomination and decline the request. Recommendation. Recommendation. I'm sorry, recommendation. We've been at this for a while tonight, <laughs> and it's hot. Okay. And I don't know who voted yes for the amendment. Okay, I think you had. Marie, Jen, and Jonathan. You, no. you had Marie, Marie, Jennifer, and George voted. Keith. And, and Keith. Keith. And Keith, okay. He's okay. I can't see. Either. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, okay, um, so we now have a, a motion. Uh, is that, can I get a second on that? Yes, Okay. Um, and any discussion? Further discussion with regard to Ms. Tripp's request? Okay, seeing no discussion, um, all those in favor of uh, the motion, which is uh, denying the request uh, consistent with the superintendent's recommendation, um, could I have a show of hands? And that is 7-0. Okay, now a, uh, another motion with regard to Allison Hawks. Jen. I make a motion that we grant Allison Hawks leave of absence for one year. Okay, 
Is there a second? I second. Seconded by Marie. Um, discussion? I have a question for the superintendent. Uh, is the individual entitled to benefits, medical? No. Nothing at all? No. Well, she could. Accumulation of time? She can do COBRA, can she, while she's gone? Yes, she can. She can continue. She has to pay for her own benefits, but she is eligible for benefits. But she pays for No, she does not. Yes. She yes. would not receive another year in the salary schedule. Is that your question? That also, right. Yeah. I guess my question is that uh, this is much less structured than when someone applies for a sabbatical or, or whatever. What if she doesn't do, during this year, what if she does not do what she has outlined in the letter? I mean, we have no, I mean, it's my understanding there have been some changes in her plans for next year. Uh, is, is your, if you support this motion and you agree to hold a job for her for a year, is there any quality control in terms of what she's done during that year or do you just allow her to come back no matter what? Well, I, I think you have to have some good faith. Well, I know, for example, everybody. that the particular uh, sailboat operator that, that her husband was going to be aligned with has withdrawn from the race. So that must have some implications for what she's going to do. And I've not had a conversation with her, so I don't know mm -hmm. whether they're going to be lined up with somebody else or whether they're going to do so, something totally different next year. But my concern is that this is much looser than what we require of other teachers who have gone on leaves of absence or who have uh, obviously who go on sabbatical. And is this a totally open uh, holding her job for a year? I, Comments I from the board? Well, I don't see how you can't, I mean I'm sorry, I, I just have a letter in front of me and I'm reading the letter and I'm just responding to that. Right. So I'm assuming that what she's saying here is what um, she will do. So I think I, I'm, so I'm just giving you additional information, which may not ultimately change what she does for the year. But I know for a fact that what she what she was planning to do when she wrote that letter has in fact changed. Well, I so would I suggest that um, Can there we should be. This, then? Well, I, I mean, think we probably have to know for that. I would suggest though that it would be contingent on her carrying through a sort of a world travel trip of some kind or it, I don't know right. I mean it doesn't have to be as specific as this but the same general idea yes. well I guess I guess the criterion that we've used with other people has been the application to the classroom so maybe we, as long as we feel that she has had an experience where there is application right. to the classroom when she returns again we don't and have I think during the year I mean according to this I, letter, this sounds mm -hmm. as if she'll have communication during the year, isn't that your Well, that was her plan now? at that point in time. Right. Um, and whether it's specifically in the last department, no, I mean, that doesn't bother me. Yeah. It's educational paralysis and continuing. Well, she's right. somewhere in here that says 3,000 schools, right? Right. Yeah. right. So, right. Yeah, I, I would support another tutorial, but I'm not aware I think um, other comments from or sentiments from board members Kevin I don't know Allison but I would say to her go for it but I can't vote yes okay she's, she's going for it no matter what yeah right. she, she has told me she's going anyway she gave us uh, a resignation letter right. Beth any other comments no I'm just I mean, I support what Allison's going to do. It would be great. I'd do it in two minutes, too. I just think the notice is too late for us. I wish we had a policy, but it probably wouldn't have worked for her anyway, because I think any policy we write, we'd say we'd need notification even by July 1st so that we could get somebody good in place for the coming year. Um, I will vote against it. Not anything to do with her or this. It's just I think you're setting up a can of worms when you don't grant one and then you do the other, and it's, it's difficult. So I want to see a policy. And change Marie, make, whatever other comments okay. um, I, I just after reading both of the letters I, I think that they are two entirely different cases and that's why I would support one and voted against the other John no I can't support the, the request I, I think that the students should be coming first this individual has good intentions but anything can happen in life we all know that she may or may not return I think we have to look out for for our, uh, our children and I think that uh, the timing is improper. 
and I think that we have to deny this request. Otherwise, we set a precedence. I know of no other profession that you can have a year off to do something and have your job waiting for you when you come back. I think that is uh, quite a benefit. Keith? Uh, I'm not going to support the motion either. Uh, it it's, looks like a great thing to do and so forth, but uh, again, you know, the timing and uh, the issues of getting a replacement, I, I think, are uh, huge. We, we start school in less than a week now. And, uh, I think we have a replacement. We already have. Mm -hmm. Is it a one-year replacement or is it a... Well, we have not. We yeah. haven't that's, decided on that. Okay. That's unknown. That's up in the air, but there is a there is a candidate. But well, we have someone, right? Someone internal. Just for your information. New information. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Does that change your opinion? Not, not, not no. enough to change the vote. Okay. Jen. Um, I think it's a great opportunity both for Allison and for our students. I think that teachers um, can draw on their own life experiences in the classroom, and I just think this is a heck of an opportunity for everybody. Um, I don't have a problem. This is, she gave this um, six weeks before school started, um, and uh, um, I would feel free to grant her a year's leave because I think we benefit as well as she does. Um, my feeling is that I would support this. Um, I think that the the difficulty is really the absence of, of specific policy. Uh, it, this is, um, it is a, I think John said that uh, there's no other job, and, and, uh, but I don't think there's any other job like a teacher. And uh, it's a difficult one, and uh, one that requires <coughs> lifelong learning. Uh, the timing is not good. Um, hearing that this ordinarily would have passed probably the, the uh, criteria uh, for a sabbatical, um, uh, saddens me a little bit because it could have been done a, a different way, but on the other hand, it also makes me think that um, it does have um, it, it does have merit to it. Um, my only stipulation would be that it is the experience that's being explained to me on this letter, and I wouldn't put a lot of latitude to that. That's I'm approving sort of this interactive um, world tour check-in kind of deal um, coming back uh, next year. Any other discussion or comments? Then um, let's just um, let's just reiterate the the uh, motion again is to um, provide uh, Allison Hawks uh, with the leave of absence that she has requested. All those in favor? It's three. All those opposed? Four. The request is denied. And I just want to reiterate that. Yes, we think it's a good experience, but I also have a great deal of reassurance that if she's interested in coming back, that we would have a vacancy at Plum Cove. It might not be third grade, it might be fourth grade, or it might be second grade, but I feel sure that they would be job possibilities when she returns. Next on the agenda yes, we is... We have one administrator resignation. Mm -hmm. uh, we've received a resignation from Nancy St. John, the assistant principal <coughs> at Plum Cove School. She's taken a position as principal in South Portland for the Hamlin and Small Schools. And I recommend that you accept her resignation with regret. Do we have a motion? Move that we accept Nancy's resignation with regret. And a second? Second. By Beth. Uh, discussion? Comments? I just wanted to say um, I heard Nancy was a wonderful teacher when she was in the system. None of my kids had her and I wasn't around when she was, but I've heard she was just wonderful. And we know she served us as Poncova's assistant principal for many years and we will miss her very much. Thank you, Nancy. Other questions? Ditto. Ditto on that. It's I'm been great, my experience with Nancy, and uh, we're going to miss her a lot. This is a very significant, obviously, job opportunity for Nancy and one that she's been anxious to do. Um, other comments? Comments. Nancy, thank you and good luck. I think on balance, it, it's good. Nancy will be a principal. Everyone's going to deeply miss her. And she has worked in Fonco for 17 years, uh, both as a teacher and an administrator. And uh, for years, she kind of carried the torch of continuity at Fonco. So I want to express my gratitude. But I, I worked with her for three years. There are people in the, in the system who worked with her a lot longer. 
know her better, and uh, I can't possibly express um, their um, dismay, sort of, but uh, I guess mixed emotions and good uh, best wishes for Nancy in the future. Kevin, I'm sorry, I think that we may have missed your comment. That's all right. Would you? Uh, just a quick thank you and good luck to Nancy on her uh, new position. Other comments from the board? I know for myself, um, uh, I had the pleasure of working with Nancy on working out a few issues, and uh, she was uh, responsive, professional, and, and delightful to work with um, as a board member. Uh, also, she has been um, a delight to work with, and we certainly wish her best. Best of luck um, in her new assignment, and we're going to miss her. As a, as a protest, can you vote against yeah. accepting that? <laughs> <laughs> you can. Good. Mm. Okay. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you would like to do that, um, we will uh, then vote on the uh, accepting the resignation of uh, Nancy St. John. All those in favor? I think we have one, two, three. And five. five. It's just symbolic. Okay. Symbolic. And <laughs> those against? Two. Two. And that was uh, acceptance with regret. Right. I have one teacher retirement, uh, Carrie Hall, who has been a teacher, an English teacher at the high school, um, will be retiring. Her mother is seriously ill, and she feels that she needs to devote her time to her, and again, uh, it is with regret. She's been a very active teacher. She was scheduled to be the president of the teachers' union this next year, so she's leaving a void in many aspects of the career. Do we have a motion? I move that we accept Carrie Hall's <coughs> resignation. Second. Second. This is a retirement, isn't it? It's retirement. A, it's a re retirement. Retirement. With regret. With regret. Second. Second. Yes. Discussion. Question, to the superintendent. Yes. Are the funds in the budget to uh, accommodate this retirement, or does this individual have to wait till we get into the next budget session? No, we will accommodate her in this budget. I would just uh, Comments, mention Peter? that uh, Carrie will be missed sorely as a teacher by students and staff. Uh, the caring that she puts into the education of Kate the students has uh, always been extremely uh, evident. Uh, willingness to try to figure out what will make a situation work for a student and uh, bending over backwards to try to make that uh, happen. I know there will be many students that will be sad to uh, see her leave as uh, am I. It was an extraordinarily difficult decision for her. And she also has the most elegant classroom at the By high far. school. By far. By far. <laughs> Other comments from the board? Um, uh, certainly on behalf of the board, uh, we would like to uh, extend our thanks and um, and uh, good wishes for um, a very pleasant retirement. Uh, can I have a vote? All those in favor, accepting this resignation with regret. Seven zero. Okay, moving on to the nominations. Uh, we have replacing Craig Roberts in the seventh grade, Karen Driscoll, replacing Ted DeMille in kindergarten, Catherine Cornell. Replacing Deb Twombly in grade four, Christine Tweedy. And replacing Allison Hawks in grade three, Sarah Carroll. And we also have um, Linda Paul. I think we talked about that before, but she will be, she has been an ed tech in the kindergarten and she will be 0.5. Uh, she will be a half time kindergarten, next, kindergarten teacher next year. And Charlotte Hanner at the high school, who has been with us as a point eight teacher, and we, Peter wishes to move her to full time. And as you recall, through the budget process, he had some flexibility in terms of how many sections he was going to need based on enrollment. That, that actually, uh, that's still true, but that wasn't related to that. We had that Paul piece. Jackson had been teaching one fifth, uh, and uh, was not, and so we needed one fifth more teacher. As long as you've got the money. Just for uh, clarification. Uh, for clarification, she does, uh, uh, she will teach, uh, if this is approved, uh, eight tenths in the high school and two tenths in the middle school. Last year she was six tenths in the high school, two tenths in the middle school. Combined full time. I move that we accept the superintendent's nominations as presented. Is there a second? Second. Marie? Uh, discussion? I, I have a question. Is, is Linda going to be um, an ed tech too, the other yes. of the day? Part of the day. 
No. No? She's just going to be half time? Right. And we, we still have one head tech assigned to the seven concurrent sessions. So she's only going, she is not going to do anything the other half of the day then? Okay. So she's at uh, half time concurrent. And that's it. Yep. Okay. And th there's seven sections. How many kids do we have? Do we have? Well, we've been waiting for you to ask that question. Well, number, I think we did agree in the number being 114, more or less. It was 114 this morning, which means seven sections. At uh, 114, the average is 19. We decided that's when we needed uh, seven sections. So we we're exactly there this morning at 8 o'clock. Then that brings it down to. 16 or 17 a section? 19. Yeah, um, there's always a little fluctuation because of the, the bus route. So some of the classes might be 15, which means some 17. I have mm -hmm. to say that it was a more, uh, I guess, relaxing, but it was an easier summer because we had that policy in place. So, so there's 15 to 17 in the class? I thought you just said 19. It, it's at 19, that's when we decided for the seven. <coughs> Seven sections, it goes to 16 and a half or something. No half kids. Yeah. It was, and that's what we're doing, seven sections. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, yeah we've basically been planning on a seven section because right. that's sort of what the numbers have indicated. We went through a spell where we thought we might have to go to eight and drop the other way. But yeah, this, point, I think this will be, this will hold. At one point, I think we had 126 names. Mm -hmm. Now it's 114, but I mean, it could change tomorrow, but it's right at the moment, so mm -hmm. I feel strongly that seven's the way to go. Well, with the seven sections, we do have some breathing room. Right. right. Can I ask the superintendent to repeat what she says all these people are going to? Sure. Sure. Karen. Can we go through again? Yes, Karen Driscoll. Right. Karen Driscoll in grade seven will be replacing Craig Roberts, mm -hmm. uh, Catherine Cornell in kindergarten, and she'll be a full time kindergarten teacher, and she's replacing Ted DeMille. Ted DeMille. Sarah Carroll in grade three, replacing Allison Hawks. And then Linda Paul, be a half-time kindergarten teacher. And that's the new section. We had six sections this past year. And Christine Tweedy in grade four will replace Deb Twombly. Thank you. And Charlotte Hanna, we're adding point two to her. But she's currently a staff member. Thank you. Okay, other questions or comments about the superintendent's nominations to teacher positions? If none, is there a motion? I already made already one. Have a vote. We have one, and we have it seconded. Then a vote. Um, all those in favor? Seven zero. Mm -hmm. on to Moving on positions. to fall athletic positions. Keith's been here waiting for this patiently. Uh, middle school. We have Chris Jackson for seventh grade boys soccer, and Susan Ray for middle school tennis. We also have. Joe Henriksen for 8th grade boys soccer, and Cynthia Curry for 7th grade field hockey. Kevin McDonald for 8th grade girls soccer. At the high school, Kathleen Swinborn for JV girls soccer. And that's a different order than what you have. I just, I grouped the middle school together with the high school. Okay, so we're looking at all of the coaching nominations. Right, and you should have some background information on all of them. We do. Well, I we have McDonald. Uh, was yeah, a separate sheet. Separate sheet. The finance committee package. It came in, package. It came in it was last. Yesterday. Yeah. So, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the superintendent's nominations for athletic uh, uh, coaching positions. Is there a second? Second. Um, any discussion? I just have a question. Keith, are we done with all the fall positions? We have one. What's left? Seventh grade girls soccer. We have a I'm hoping there's a person who is a new health teacher at the middle school will ah. we'll do it. So we're waiting to hear on that? Yeah. You're twisting his arm? I'm talking to him, yeah. Okay. Great. Thank all you. Other questions, discussion? Done. Um, then a vote. Uh, all those in favor? 7 0. Thank you. And we have nominations for co curricular fee positions, and I have three. Amy Karen, who is a new teacher, uh, will be the team leader for Pond Cove Kindergarten. Ren Wilkinson for grade three, and Susan Welch for grade four. Those are all team leader positions. I got a question. What about grade seven? We do not have that position still yet. Hopefully, for the September 8th meeting, I'll have a name to bring forth. We, we are working on it. I just, yeah, that reminds me, I did want to say again that at the meeting on the 8th, 
we will have a full accounting, not just of teachers, but of all the staff changes, so that you have a chance to kind of catch up with the ed techs and all those positions. Okay. I move that we accept the superintendent's nominations for co-curricular fee positions. Specifically the team leaders. Specifically team leaders. A second? Second. Beth? Discussion? I have a question. Uh, I, I don't have Amy, Amy's uh, information in front of me. Uh, is, is she a brand new teacher? No, she's she an experienced, experienced teacher. teacher. She's been in Waldeboro. Um, I hesitate to say she comes very highly recommended by the superintendent in Waldeboro. And if you don't read the newspaper, you might not realize the significance of that. <laughs> but she is an experienced teacher. She's been there maybe three or four years. Okay. Uh, she's done a lot of staff development work relevant to what we're doing at Pond Cove, and we're very happy to have her. Okay, great. I was just yes. I was wondering about a brand new teacher no. being team leader. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah. no. Other questions? Discussion? If not, then follow up on the superintendent's comment. Will that report also include what the possible savings might be yes. by the new teachers well, as that, opposed I think to we'll do that. budget? Yes, I think we'll do that at the finance committee on that night as well. Okay. Knowing that it's fluid, John. <laughs> I'd like to then take a vote. All those in favor? 7-0. Um, last on the agenda is uh, a request for executive session to review a legal matter. Um, before we move there, I just want to um, identify some dates uh, to remember here. Uh, the um, Finance Subcommittee will meet on Tuesday, September 8th um, at 6.30 in the William Jordan Conference Room, immediately followed by the regular school board meeting for September, which will be at 7.30 in the Council Chambers. And it yes, is the so 8th and not the 9th. If you're that looking, holiday is giving us a high time. If you're looking, it says say the 9th, it also 97. says 97. So it will be September 8th, 1998. <laughs> Mary, Mary is going Mary. on vacation tomorrow. <laughs> I, I need a vacation. <laughs> I'm just trying to give you proof that I do. <laughs> Additionally, there will be a policy subcommittee meeting that will be on Wednesday, September 16th, 1998. <laughs> and that will be at 8.30 a.m. In the, in the William Jordan Conference Room. Um, now a uh, request <laughs> to enter executive session to review a legal matter. So moved. So moved and seconded. Second. Question. Comment. Will we be coming back uh, from the executive session to take up an item on the agenda that the public should be awake, made aware of? No, I don't anticipate any action as a result of executive session. Do you wish to recuse yourself from the executive session, Joe? Oh, yeah. oh. Oh. I'll enter executive session and make that decision. Oh, I announced, it, I announced it at the beginning of the meeting. Pardon me? I announced it at the beginning of the meeting. Would you like to um, refresh? Yeah, it's an update on the Enrich case. You didn't say that. You said it was a, to review a legal issue. No, I did mention the Enrich case. You mentioned her name? I did. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. I apologize. I, am, I will recuse myself at this time on the TV that I will not attend the executive session. Okay. conflict of interest. Further discussion with regard to um, adjournment to a uh, executive session. If none, then a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Seven zero, and uh, we are left.